Hey everyone, it's Jennifer, and today I have for you shortcutting the these crutch words. Crutch words are all guilty of using, we are all guilty of using them. Like seriously, it's literally so easy to just start a sentence with useless filler words and basically just keep going. See what we did there? In short, they're clutter. Words or phrases we use to give ourselves a second to think while we're speaking. Crutch words are like filler episodes from your favorite TV show. They interrupt the continuity of the show, and sometimes you forget where the show is going. By cutting out crutch words in your writing and speech, you can streamline your point of view and stay, and stay focused on the message. Let's look at some common crutch words to identify and strike them from your speech. Like, like should be described, like should describe similarities between two or more things, but has become more one of the most common crutch words, like, is peppered throughout our sentences, and most of us aren't even aware how often we use it. It's so ubiquitous, it has become a replacement for said. Reduce your reliance on this word, and you'll find your sentences flowing smoothly and with more purpose. Seriously. At one point, seriously implied real gravity. But these days, similar to literally, the word seriously has become more of an exaggeration. That may be fine in some scenarios when you want to be sarcastic or reinforce importance, but if you're using seriously without truly saying anything of import, you might want to reconsider your seriousness. Just. You can just. Maybe this is how you start some of your requests. Just diminishes the importance of the request or statement. If you take away just, you have a more powerful statement. It's more definitive. It sounds like you value what you are saying. Just shows that what you have to say isn't a big deal, and this can work against you. Actually, actually has suffered a similar fate is seriously. It is used to pack a punch, asserting something as the truth, but these days, actually, has become a sentence seasoning. If you lead off with, I actually like that show, you're not countering a previously false statement. No one can refute it as incorrect, even if they disagree with you. So why is it in your sentence? Literally. Literally may be the most misused crutch word in the literal definition. If you take something literally, you're taking it to mean exactly what the person said. Sadly, this crutch word has become so commonplace that most current usages of literally are assumed to mean figuratively. Even the Oxford English Dictionary added a figurative definition to literally. Basically, basically is a crutch word is used in a way Opposite its true meaning is supposed to denote simplicity, something that's obvious to everyone involved. As a crutch, it's used more often in complicated explanations where things usually aren't as obvious as the word implies. Honesty, honestly, it is said that people who start a sentence with honestly are about to say something dishonest. While this may not always be the case, it's certainly not used to emphasize the truthfulness. More often, this crushed word is used to show surprise or superiority. Well, here's a bonus. Well is a hedge word. It is meant to soften the impact of whatever comes after it. Or, on the other hand, well also decreases any value your statement might have had without the hedge. Be thoughtful when you use this one in your speech. Those were really cool. And five of the most common comma mistakes. Okay. The comma is a tiny punctuation mark that lacks a lot of punch. Commas separate parts of a sentence, such as clauses or items. They can indicate pauses or just help to clear up the meaning of a phrase. However, it's easy to get confused when it comes to setting commas in just the right place. From comma splices to serial commas, we review some of the most common comma errors. Introductory words. Let's start with the very beginning. When starting a sentence with a dependent clause or introductory word, use a comma. No, comma, I don't want any pie. On Tuesday, comma, Mark is coming over. 
depending on the weather, comma, we're going to the beach. Commas can offer, often indicate a short pause, and that's what's happening here. The comma also subtly signals to the reader that the introductory part of the sentence is over. A comma here also helps avoid confusion. Take the sentence, after eating, comma, my brother went home. Without the comma, the sentence has an awkward start with, after eating my brother. Luckily, the comma indicates, the brother left. Comma splice. When a comma connects two independent clauses with no coordinating conjunction in between, it's called a comma splice. Diana went to the movie, movies, comma, she bought popcorn. The comma separates the two halves of the sentence, but each of these halves could stand independently. For example, Diana went to the movies and she bought popcorn. Each make grammatical sense as statements by themselves. That means they don't need to be linked together by the comma. There are several ways to fix a comma splice. The first way is by adding a coordinating conjunction. For example, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Diana went to the movies and she bought popcorn. The comma could be changed to a semicolon. Diana went to the movies, semicolon, she bought popcorn. Finally, each independent clause could be its own sentence. Diana went to the movies, period. She bought popcorn, period. Oxford comma, also known as the serial comma. The Oxford comma is the sometimes optional final comma in a list of things. For example, the comma after milk in the sentence below. Gordon bought bread, comma, milk, comma, and eggs at the grocery store. Some style guides insist on the Oxford comma, and others think it's no big deal. But neglecting to use it can lead to some serious misunderstandings. I'm having breakfast with my parents, Beyonce, and Jay-Z. The lack of an Oxford comma makes its meaning ambiguous. Is the speaker having breakfast with four people, mom, dad, Beyonce, and Jay-Z, or are their parents actually Beyonce and Jay-Z? Inquiring minds want to know. A final comma in the series would clear up the confusion. Fanboys. No, this rule doesn't have anything to do with Star Wars or Marvel fandoms. Fanboys is a mnemonic device that stands for for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. These are the seven coordinating conjunctions. When joining two independent clause <clears throat> clauses with a coordinating conjunction, use a comma. I played basketball, comma, but I could never win a gold medal. The trap door opened, comma, and I fell to the ground. That snake is sleet is creepy, comma, so I don't want to hold it. Remember, the comma comes between two independent clauses. That means these two parts of the sentence could stand on their own. I played basketball and I could never win a gold medal could make sense as independent statements. The coordinating conjunction but, along with the comma, helps glue them together into one streamlined thought. Be on the lookout for fake fanboys. Like, however, therefore, moreover, these conjunctions usually require a semicolon when they join two independent clauses. Quotation marks. Whether quoting the President or of the United States or your next door neighbor, commas and quotation marks can be confusing. The rule here is straightforward. In American English, in American English, commas go inside the quotation mark. Life is what happens when you're busy making other plans, comma, in quotation, said John Lennon. The rule is slightly different in British English. Put commas outside the quotation marks across the pond, but don't forget to drive on the left side of the road. Wow, I found this really cool. I hope you guys have enjoyed that. In the meantime, please stay safe, be kind to one another. As always, happy yarning. Bye now.